Welcome to the talk series on Guiding Lights by Zaggle. I'm Pail Gandhi Hoon, your host bringing you up and close for riveting conversations with some of the brightest HR leaders. Today I have someone with me who is fearless. She believes in stepping out of her comfort zone. She doesn't shy away from taking on new frontiers of leadership. She has played a myriad roles spanning across close to 3 decades of being a positive change strategist, behavioral scientist, executive coach, strategic and creative decision maker. So on that note, I'd like to welcome you Dr. Tanaya uh, Mishra and Global CHRO for Strides to be a guiding light today. Welcome Tanaya. Thank you very much. So Tanaya now that we've got started I'd like to start with the many accolades that you won for your contribution to HR and business to name a few India's best CHRO award in 2017 you've also been recognized as Asia's 40th most aspirational women HR leaders by People Matters in 2018 and many more so I think I'd like to kick start by just asking you what drives you who was bringing this excellence as a senior hr leader it's from within it's the passion to do something for the fraternity and for people and i believe if you have this philosophy of a people first strategy then all you need to do is let your passions and your imagination and get your teams together and then obviously success is yours and milestones are yours because every organization is different and one size doesn't fit all so you have to understand the organization and put your initiatives as per the need of the organization and as per the you know the graph of the organization of where it is what do you think is your personal mantra and your formula to really making it a huge success very very simple pile two words adapt and adopt you have to adapt to the situation because look i have worked from very large family run businesses to very large multinationals so you have to adapt to the environment the fact that you have come so far means that obviously you are good at your game you know your stuff but you have to adapt to the environment the other thing is adopt what are the nuances of the place what are the nuances of the culture how do you understand the little things that you should not do and the little things that you need to do so my mantra is simple for all professionals adapt and adopt yeah, i think you've given us the a square formula there and we're going to stick to that it would be wise to ask you in your course of your career i'm sure you've kind of climbed many a mountain since today you are the guiding light for us is there any one or two trails and specifically i think what is interesting like you said the culture mention where you faced some challenge and how did you really overcome that and really reach the summit because this is going to be inspiring for the audience one example that i want to give you is uh, this mantra of thinking to yourself and letting yourself know in your subconscious that impossible is i am possible i'll give you a little example for a very large company i was handling the union and it was in a in a foreign land bangladesh actually and i was handling employee relations and policies as the lead for a very large organization multinational accenture actually and we had this big union out there and i was the only lady in a room full of gentlemen and knowing the unions they can be quite ferocious initially you know people thought that it was difficult but believe you me it wasn't it was about understanding first of all you do not have mostly women doing negotiations a b is you would think that in the it its and in a sophisticated multinational like accenture you would not really have unions but they did but the good thing is that they allowed me full liberty and i must compliment the organization because you really not alone they have this culture of stewardship so behind the scenes there are a number of people helping you in your mission but you are the one who's sitting across and negotiating sometimes i didn't have a dime in my pocket or a naya rupaya in my pocket and here i was negotiating a deal with the union i had another colleague linda from uk who was who was there 
but you know she was a britisher and then of course you know bangladesh is very much like our culture and because i'm from odisha i speak bengali as well so sitting across you know with the unions trying to understand but the good thing about them or a good thing about personal relationships and conversations is the fact that if you really strike a chord most people will let you know what their intent is and if you understand and if you have humanity and humility you're able to pick up those signals but the good news is that we exited out of bangladesh without you know any kind of legal issues and we are still good friends i mean the union president is someone that i can still call up and and ask every time that i go i mean it strikes also we have unions and every time that i go face a union i'll call him up i said ibrahim how are you and you know i'm going to face a union today and i'm going to do this collective bargaining so it's the relationships that you build but it's about also understanding that any big problem is really not a problem it's about breaking it into little pieces and then addressing those pieces one by one and that way you really you'll be successful i'm a rare breed very honestly pile i'm a woman in the manufacturing industry and in the it artist industry and the unions <laughs> and what might be interesting from a lot of new aspiring hr leaders and especially women leaders is what is it about you tanaya as a guiding light that actually enabled you to hold your peace and your composure go through with the negotiations you said you didn't have that one paisa and how did you come about it so i'm curious to know a little more about that this is the age of diy which is do it yourself I would say that all of us have it in us. It's about you know getting deep into your subconsciousness and actually understanding what is it that you can do. Who are your anchors? And drawing from the environment your sources of inspiration or your sources of network or who can help you in that situation. God has his ways of sending his angels, right? So I think it's about understanding who is that angel at that point in time. We all play anchor roles without even understanding. I would say that it's all within us. It's trying to understand our own self and getting the power from within to be able to deal with situations. So you're talking about adaptability, you're talking about taking on changes and there is no other way but to embrace technology in today's day and age. So anything specifically you saw in your career so far uh, in terms of HR and technology. We looked at large data in terms of building big data and understanding predictive indices of what can really proactively as human resources do to pick up the trends and instead of being a reactive human resources to be a proactive human resources and let's understand that tomorrow when i say future ready we're talking of metaverse everywhere that you go everybody's talking about metaverse it's about understanding the kind of people that we are going to get into the organization and how as hr leaders are we going to deal with one being which is in the corporate world and another being which is somewhere out there in the universe and you really don't know what the 3d <laughs> you know figurine is going to be like the avatar so i think it's about understanding what it is i think the challenge for hr specifically in the coming times is going to be how to keep that human touch alive but let's look at something even more interesting uh, because you are a guiding light today and i'd like to know from you who have been your guiding lights in inspiring you in your life in your career what are some of the lessons you'd like to share with all of us that have really chiseled you to be who you are i would not say there has been one guiding light i think there've been several and i think it's situations and how do you handle as a child Uh, my mother caught me plucking berries and eating them while I was waiting for my you know these these wild shops that you have and uh, she put me into dancing right so i started dancing and that's how by the age of when i was in class 7 i was a i was a dancer i was a post graduate in odyssey dance i had gone to see a function one day because my mom was a professor i found another senior classmate who was playing basketball and i said hey i want to play basketball and i went to, i went to play basketball and i played in the national team during that time she was the guiding light 
So I think you know people come in different stages of your life and God sends his angels. Your mum I can see as a common theme a woman behind a woman you know so I can completely associate with that as well myself and there's always been that little nudge and the push to go ahead and do something beyond your comfort zone and that's where really growth lies. I think you know the last couple of years HR has seen a tremendous change and transformation in its image. So HR is taking a center stage. One of the McKinsey reports do indicate that initially I think the entire focus of the industry in HR per se and I'm sure you'd agree with that was really about cost optimization, getting businesses aligned, technological advancements, but I think now of course the pandemic we cannot ignore it. You know over the last 2 years there's been a swift change in the way that even leaders across the world like McKinsey reports are looking at making it a very personalized experience so my question to you tanaya here is how do you think hr has transformed you know over the last 27 years you've had and where is it today i think that just like hr people today are moving into business business people are also moving into human resources it is extremely important to understand that you need that empathetic skill and the agility to be able to quickly switch and to be able to deal with the situation sometimes the fundamentals are not in place but if you do the fundamentals then let's understand the mid and what is the future we'll go for a toss so as professionals we've got to have parallel tracks one to set up the foundation right because a lot of foundations in material of who which company it is is missing the second thing is building on what you have what is pharma going to look like what kind of a critical resources am i going to have what are those functional and enterprise critical roles that i should have in the organization so i think as hr people we have to play three different fields it's not one without the other but all of it together and to understand what is it that the future looks like so what it looks like for pharma will not look like in the cement industry what it looks like in the cement industry will not be the same thing as the it its right yes there are broad themes but it's about understanding what is really the poise of the organization what is that the organization want to take i think what is very interesting is like you're talking about forecasting and looking at trends what is really coming up and hr has become that one pivot point where you have visibility of the business how you're aligning your resources taking care of the skill gap so i think tanaya you've summed it up beautifully well of taking that into cognizance and hr has that helicopter view of pretty much the entire thing so it's really the thread that sews the entire cloth together so thank you so much for adding that is also another interesting aspect is knowing what is that hr trend you as the guiding light of following and something that the audience absolutely should not miss i definitely follow a lot of work around blockchain that data analytics artificial intelligence because a lot of tools that are coming in is all to do with ai understanding data data points or data analytics to understand the, the trends so that you take informed decisions these are some of the things that one should not miss and of course meta is the next one so we got to understand you know how is that going to align with what we have today and what are the future trends that we should therefore take i think there are a lot of good hr groups which give some trends you know for instance if there's a survey a mercer survey on the trends of what kind of compensation will it be so you get a lot of inputs out of these small groups and it's about taking those nuggets making those connections trying to speak to people and it's also about networking what are the kind of reward and recognition trends you think that have really evolved over a period of time look it's always about people right and engagement surveys only throw a trend of the kind of people that you are but it's not about doing that one survey once in a while right it's about engaging all the time you do have ai tools like infido where you could do a poll immediately to understand what is the trend and what is not it's also easy to see that you know something that you want to push for instance i was trying to push behaviors with in strikes we have this app called seek and it's amazing to see 70% and 80% of the population actually participate in the six week challenge right i think it's about what is it that you want to do people are hungry they want something different they want something engaging and most of them really are in the organization because they love the organization for what it delivers it's about us to 
pick up those threads and to excite them better i would not say that you know it's something really unique thinking but i think some of it is out of the box but it's also about understanding the trend so it, it's two things really it's about understanding the culture of the organization what do people really want and then nudging nudging and trying to push them in that direction and also understanding how can you partner with behaviors with technology or culture with technology to bring it all together to marry the two to make something a beautiful marriage of sorts so there are a lot of tools available but i'm not going to get into the details but i think if you look at it it's about how you can improve the current enthusiasm passion quotient eq levels of people because really they want to do something which is really outstanding yeah i think and the next gen is quite clear about their expectations they are looking at not just a higher pay package but they're also looking at experiences how they can grow and what can the organization do in terms of building them up and as an individual entirely so different benefits or rewards recognitions like you said what i'm hearing from you is really tweaking it to what they want and keeping the pulse going basis that what was interesting one quick one on that one when you spoke about the event that you ran at strides what was it exactly that happened during the 6 weeks so we have something called behaviors look we are a very quality conscious in the pharma industry you have to be very very conscious on on quality and therefore we have something called the quality behaviors which is both quantitative and qualitative right so we ran the qualitative so for every level we have something called the ice values and we've done the entire framework of we care and within that framework we think that you know if we are able to promote the behaviors and we have track wise so we ran this big challenge where we had people into groups and they were doing you know for instance proactive so examples of proactive so so you know we we ran this contest across so uh, and now we could have a grand finale which is going to be like a kon banega karodpati kind of a thing <laughs> working very closely with the quality head to try and promote something which is on the quantitative aspects of the behavior so that we see a quantum leap you know you're nudging people but ultimately you are making products because remember we're making medicines you can have a little flaw in any medicine that you have you know so whether it is consumable or it's in patches or it's uh, it's injectables anything so so that's what i was trying to say that's oxytocin rush there on that note what is the one advice that you'd like to absolutely share with hr professionals live life king size try and put whatever experiences you have into the current assignment So are you saying you need to adapt. adapt? So think differently. Don't just bring what you got. Otherwise, you'll get exactly what you bought till now. Templatize. Right. Thank you so much, Sanaya. It's been an absolute pleasure interacting with you, and uh, for having you as a guiding light today. Thank you so much.